Welcome back to YouTube. I'm Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews. And it's been a long time since my last video because I had a vacation for a couple of weeks and finally I'm here to talk about Android 12 Beta 4 and compare it against Beta 3 to show you all the new changes. I know it's a little bit late but it's better than nothing. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's start with the lock screen and it got some visual tweaks. The first one is the permanent padlock icon at the bottom. Also, the wallet shortcut now looks different compared to the one we have in Beta 3. Also, 9to5Google mentioned that the now playing feature is now using Google Sans font. However, I don't see any difference between Beta 3 and Beta 4 in my case. So please let me know in the comments if you got this change. Now let's talk about the home screen and recent apps screen. The first change is in the Google search widget. First, you will see the G logo and the microphone icons are now bigger compared to Beta 3 and they also support Material U theming, which wasn't the case before. The difference in colors is not that big if you are using light theme, but it will become more obvious once I switch to dark theme. So let me show you this. Here on Beta 3, I can only see the blue color for both, but on Beta 4, there are more than one color for the G logo and the microphone icon. And you will only see this new feature if you are using the themed icons under the wallpaper and the style app, but once you revert back to normal, it will show the typical Google colors, no difference between the two. The second difference is in the folders color. Beta 4 is now using a lighter gray color compared to Beta 3 if you are using dark theme. Another change that I noticed on Beta 3 if you are using a dark wallpaper like this one, for example, and then switch to the light theme, you will see the folders are sticking to the dark color. But on Beta 4, no matter which wallpaper you use, the folders will always change to white color. Also on beta 4, the app shortcuts and the home screen menu are using different colors, even if you are using the same wallpaper. So for example, when I tap and hold on Google Chrome, on both here on beta 4, you will see three different colors for the items, but on beta 3, it's only using one color. And that's also the case for the home screen menu. And now let's go to the home settings to show you another change. Now, when you go to suggestions, you will see the page is now matching the same design language of Android 12 with bigger font and toggles. And when you tap on blocked apps, it will take you to a separate page with the full list of apps you have and the check boxes are now rounded. But if we're gonna take a look at the previous versions of Android, First, you will get a floating page instead and the checkboxes are using a square design. The save button is now located at the top right corner instead of the bottom and it has a pill shaped design instead of a text only. The cancel button has been dropped as well because you can use the back gesture instead. Back to the home screen one more time and now when you move any icon, you will see the highlight around the icon is now in white color and instead of matching your wallpaper color and that's also the case for the drop targets at the top. And when we go to widgets, the handles are also in white and instead of matching your wallpaper color, same as the drop targets at the top. And the final change related to the home screen is in the app drawer. On beta 3, when you drag your finger on top of the scroll bar, it won't show you the letters as before, but this feature is back again with beta 4. Now let's talk about the recent apps screen. And the first change is this new floating image button that will appear next to any of the images you have in your recent app. In my case, I'm using YouTube and the button appeared next to the first thumbnail in the list. When I tap on this button, two things will happen. First, it will show you some of the options you can choose at the top and the image itself will pop up so you can drag and drop it on top of any of your recent contacts to quickly share the image or you can drop it on more to get your normal share sheet. And that's exactly the same thing as tapping and holding on any of the images in your recent apps in the previous versions of Android with the same options at the top but it lacks the drag and drop feature. One more thing worth mentioning here, while this button only appears next to one of the images you have, but you still can do the same exact thing by tapping and holding on other images too, it will give you the same options at the top and you still can drag and drop the image the same way. Also keep in mind that you are not able to directly drag and drop this button to your recent contacts. However, you have to tap on it first to be able to drag and drop the image and get the options. This new floating button will appear on each and every app with only one exception. So for example, it shows here on Google Chrome and also on my Instagram, 
but if the app has multiple photos next to each other like Google Photos for example, you won't see this button anywhere. However, you still can do the same thing by tapping and holding on the image. The image will pop up, you still have the same options and you can drag and drop the image as normal. Now let me show you a brand new accessibility feature in Beta 4 that I didn't see anyone talking about just yet. To access this feature, you can go to settings and then accessibility and then switch access, then settings and you will see a new menu item here called camera switch settings. When you go inside, you will see a tutorial about how the feature works. In a nutshell, this feature will allow you to assign certain face gestures to do certain actions on your phone and these gestures will be detected using the front facing camera. So let's see how it works. When you scroll down, you will find predefined face gestures to choose from like open mouth, smile, raise eyebrows, look left, look right, and look up. So let's say we want to assign the raise eyebrows gesture to a certain action. The first thing you see at the top is the camera viewfinder to try the gesture yourself and see if the phone can get it. So let's give it a try. As you see here, it says in blue, raise eyebrows and the counter is running, which means the gesture is detected successfully by the phone. Under the camera viewfinder, you will see the gesture size slider. It says here in the description, choose how big you want to make the gesture before it's recognized, which means it's a sensitivity slider. The bigger you make the number, the less sensitive it will be. After that, you get the gesture duration. And when you tap on it, it says here, choose how long you will need to hold the face gesture before an action is triggered. So I will keep it on the default for now. And finally, you can assign the action you want by tapping on edit assignment. Here you will see a predefined list of actions that you cannot change like quick settings, notifications, go back, go home, scroll, and so on and so forth. So now I'm assigning the raise eyebrows gesture to show my quick settings. So let's give it a try and see how it works. So it works perfectly well as you see here. And I can get my quick settings in a second. And by the way, this feature works surprisingly well with the eye movement gestures like look up, look left, and look right. And in my case, I'm assigning the look up gesture to go home. So let's give it a try. As you see here, it works surprisingly well. I don't need to do the gesture twice. You might be wondering about those two lines on the left and right. They are simply indicators to let you know if the phone detected your gesture or not. So for example, when I raise my eyebrows, they will keep flashing in blue and that means the phone detected my gesture successfully. But you still can turn off these indicators if you want to by going to settings and then accessibility, then go to switch access one more time, settings, and then camera switch access and when you scroll down you will see something called enhanced visual feedback once you turn off the switch the indicators will disappear and at the top you will also find this small face it will turn into red if the phone can't see your face once it detects your face it will turn into blue so i think this feature will be very useful for everyone if google expanded the list of actions to include things like taking a selfie in three seconds using a face gesture also, if you are using your phone while driving, you can assign a face gesture to play music without touching your phone and so on and so forth. Next, the wallpaper and the style app got some visual tweaks. The first change is the wallpaper colors and basic colors buttons are now separated and they have rounded rectangles and instead of this pill shaped design, you will see the same change here under the preview page and also when you go to the full screen. And the final change in the wallpaper and the style app is related to the themed icons. The feature is now marked as beta, which wasn't the case before. Now let's talk about the notifications shade and the quick settings. The first change is in the internet tile. Now you will get a Wi-Fi toggle to turn the feature on or off, and instead of using this text button at the bottom left corner. Next, the screen recording card got some visual tweaks as well, so let me show you this. First, the start and the cancel buttons are now using a bill-shaped design. The thin horizontal line that separates between the options no longer exists. Also, the toggles are now matching the same toggles we have under settings and instead of using Android 11 toggles. And when you tap on record audio, you will see the floating menu is now using your device theme with more rounded corners. The description text is also centered here on beta 4. And when you start recording on both let me show you this. 
Here on beta 3 you can stop the recording by tapping anywhere on the tile like this while here on beta 4 no matter where you tap it will never stop unless you tap the stop button here at the bottom left corner. Next the home controls tile is now renamed to device controls. Next on beta 4 when you expand your notification shade while in landscape mode the notifications will be more compact and centered which makes it easier to read instead of utilizing the full width of the screen like before. Next Pixel Buds got a redesigned battery notification when it's collapsed you will see the text left case and right and when you expand the notification the text will turn into images. Now let's talk about some random changes and the first one is in the share sheet so let me try to share something on both. The first change is the word share is no longer showing on beta 4. The nearby and the edit buttons are also using a different design. They have rounded rectangles instead of a pill shaped design. Next, screenshots. Now on beta 4 when you take a screenshot and then go to the markup app you will see new cropping handles. They look similar to the ones we have for resizing the widgets and when you go to the text editor at the top the font selector is using a bigger a fill color compared to beta 3. And with beta 4 you will see more Google apps are now supporting the themed icons feature. Here is the full list of apps I have installed on my phone so you can pause the video and go through them. And here is page number 2. Now let's talk about the differences in settings and the first change is most of the toggles are now using this pill shaped fill color around them which wasn't the case before. Next when you go inside the notification settings of any app like messages for example and then go to incoming messages to adjust the notifications now you will see an icon next to each and every menu item which wasn't the case before. Also the page title is now matching the name of the notification category you are trying to adjust in this case incoming messages and instead of using a generic title at the top. Also most of the pages under the notifications settings are now better aligned on beta 4 so for example all the options here are on the same line which is not the case in beta 3. And under the main settings page for the notifications you will see the first category is renamed from general to manage. Also the device and the app notifications menu item is now listed under privacy. Next under display and then lock screen now you will see the show lockdown option located which wasn't the case before. Under privacy there are few changes. The first one is the device personalization services is now called private compute core. But when you go inside you will see the same exact options no difference here. And when you go inside the privacy dashboard and then tap on any of the main permissions like location, camera or microphone you will see slightly different pages. First the permission history title and the icon are now removed plus the manage permission button is now fixed while here on beta 3 you need to scroll down to see the button. Next passwords and accounts and the first difference is under the autofill service category here on beta 3 you will see the same word duplicated autofill service one more time plus the word google is written in a small font while here on beta 4 you can see the word google right away under the autofill service category next when you tap on your google account under passwords and then tap on any of the passwords then put your pin code or use the fingerprint now you will see the buttons to delete or edit your password are now using a pill shaped design instead of the old design of Android 11. Next, system. On beta 3 when you go inside system it has a menu item called the power menu which includes your hold for assistant feature. But here on beta 4 the power menu is no longer showing but when you go inside gestures you will see something called press and hold power button and it has the same toggle as beta 3. Next, accessibility. And the first change is in the accessibility menu. As you see here on beta 4 it has a different icon. Not only this but when you activate the feature now you are getting bigger buttons which makes it easier for you to press. There are five more new icons under accessibility. Talk back, select to speak, live transcribe, sound amplifier and sound notifications. And the last thing to talk about under settings is the new easter egg of Android 12 that you can access by tapping on about phone and then scroll down until you find your Android version. Then tap on your Android version few times here until you get the uh, clock widget of Android 12. Then keep changing the time until you reach 12 exactly. Then release your finger and here you go it will be activated. Now let's talk about the performance and here is my Geekbench results. 
After installing Beta 4, I'm getting 1,551 points for the multi-core and 580 for the single core. However, I got the same results after installing the third beta and then after one day, my numbers dropped back again to 1,378 and 1,370. So it seems like after installing the update, you will get a performance boost and then the performance will drop back again to normal. However, I did this test after installing the fourth beta with a couple of days and I'm still getting good results. So let's do the test again on camera to see if there is any difference. I have beta 4 now for four days on my phone and my phone is running continuously for 44 hours and 52 minutes. So let's try the test one more time here to see if the performance will stick. And here you go, I'm getting 1,511 points for the multi-core score and 581 for the single core, which means the performance didn't drop after a couple of days and I didn't restart my phone recently. So it seems like this time there is a real performance improvement. Now let's talk about the bugs I spotted in the fourth beta of Android 12. And the first one is the media controls sometimes disappear from my quick settings area. And the only way to get it back is by opening the music app and play the song again. Next, the gaming mode still doesn't work on my Pixel 5. So when I go to settings and then notifications and then do not disturb, and then schedules. Here I have the gaming mode ticked. However, when I play a game, nothing happens. And the phone keeps creating these weird gaming schedules that I couldn't get rid of them. Also, I tried each and every one and none of them give me access to the gaming dashboard. However, when I tap on the settings button next to the original one, I still can toggle the game dashboard and do not disturb for games options, but still nothing happens. Next, Nearby share settings page is now using a green accent color instead of blue for some reason and it doesn't matter which wallpaper you use it will always stay in green which seems to be a bug. There are also a couple of issues reported after installing the fourth beta of Android 12 that I didn't experience myself. The first one is the VPN sometimes doesn't work however when I tested my VPN on the Pixel 5 I can use it normally and play videos without any issues so Please let me know in the comments if you faced this issue with a specific pixel model. The second issue is the notification banners sometimes don't appear for certain people and I didn't experience this one on my Pixel 5 as well. And finally, the weird looking Google search in the app drawer is still the same after installing the fourth beta. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I spotted in Android 12 beta 4. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.